In this video, I will walk you through the installation process of the digital temperature and humidity sensor for Link Force iGrow 1000 series family controllers. There are three versions of the iGrow 1000 series controller from Link 4 the iGrow 1200, the iGrow 1400, and the iGrow 1600. Each controller comes with a digital temperature and humidity sensor. It is housed in a white radiation shield as shown here. The sensor typically comes with a 100 feet of cable pre-installed. This cable is a special shielded 4-wire conductor cable that needs to be connected to the controller once both the controller and the sensor have been properly mounted to the greenhouse. The controller panel can be opened by loosening the two thumb screws located on the front panel. Keep in mind that all power needs to be disconnected at this point to prevent damages to the sensitive electronics. Once the panel is hinged downward, you can locate the termination point for the sensor in the lower right hand corner of the circuit board. Land the wires as shown with the black wire to the ground terminal block indicated by the letter G and D, red to V out terminal block, green to the DAT0 terminal block, and white to the CLK terminal block. Note that the DAT1 terminal block is skipped. That will be used by the outdoor temperature sensor which comes with the weather station. There are a few important points to keep in mind when it comes to installing sensitive sensors over lengthy cables in order to minimize noise and interference. First, keep the cable length as short as possible. Second, route the sensor cable away from any noisy voltage sources such as high voltage AC wiring. Also be wary of switching equipment such as variable frequency drives since they generate a significant amount of radio interference. And if you notice significant temperature variation due to noise, consider connecting the cable shield to the ground terminal block. Again, GND. Make sure to cover up any exposed bare wires appropriately with electrical tape. Once the sensor has been properly wired, you will need to restore power to verify the proper operations of the sensor. From the factory, the controller should recognize the sensor and display the measurement properly. In this exercise, however, we will proceed with the exercise of setting up the sensor from the very beginning. In this picture here, you can see that both alarm light in the lower left hand corner are lit, indicating that there is a sensor issue. On the display, you can see the inside temperature reading indicated as INT have dashes instead of a temperature reading. There are also dashes beneath the humidity reading as well. That is indicated by the REL HUM or R-E-L-H-U-M which stands for relative humidity. Before proceeding into the software setup, let's take a look at the various navigation buttons shown here. You can navigate into any menu by pressing the enter menu key. Use the back key to navigate to the previous menu. If there is a cursor on the screen, it can move by using the previous and next button. Once the cursor has highlighted a value, you can change the value by using the plus and minus key. So again, the menu navigation are done with the back and enter keys. Move the cursor with the previous and next and change the value with the minus and plus buttons. Many of the submenu screen will have some contextual help available. Pressing the help button will reveal some helpful hints. Let's start by pressing the enter and menu key. This is the main menu structure of the controller. Many parameters are accessible by diving down further into one of these selections. Right now we want to set up the sensor. So let's make sure that we have the cursor on the system setup selection. If not, use the previous next button to move it. Once you are there, go into the system setup selection by pressing the enter key. Again, we see more choices. Use the previous and next key to navigate to the setup inputs line as shown here and press enter. Now you see what we call the sensor mapping screen. Here's where you can quote unquote map or tell the controller where you have landed the actual wires on the terminal block. 
Earlier in slide 3, you have landed the inside temperature sensor green wire, which is the data wire into the DAT0 terminal block. This is actually the zero sensor 1 line. The DAT1 is referred to as serial sensor 2 line here. So make sure that the INT line is mapped to serial sensor 1 as shown here, which is, is indicated as serial SNS1. Since the sensor measures both temperature and humidity, do the same for the humidity line. Set that to, to serial sensor 1. The outdoor temperature sensor is referred to as OUT-T in the screen. You can leave it as none or if, if the outdoor temperature sensor is referred to as OUT-T. You can leave it as none if you don't have one or if you do then map it to serial sensor 2 as shown and the green wire for that sensor should go into DAT1 on the board. Now this actually completes the sensor mapping process. Let's go back to the previous screen. The setting will be saved automatically. Now you're back to the system setup screen. I will take this opportunity to point out a few optional screens that are relevant to the sensor setup. The controller has the ability to calibrate the sensor in software. Navigate down to the calibrate input screen line and press enter. The first sensor that you can calibrate is the in temp, inside temperature sensor. You can go to other sensor by using plus minus keys to change the value at this calibrate line. Use the previous next key to move the cursor down to the adjust line. On this line, you can change the offset value to a different reading. Use the previous and next key to move the cursor down to the adjust line. Here you can enter the offset value needed to give a different reading than what is actually measured by using the plus or minus key. This can be used to bring the measure value closer to an actual reference or it can also be used to simulate different conditions to test a greenhouse operation. Once you're done, press back to go back. Let me show you one more screen and then we're done. Navigate down to the system unit line and press enter. As you can see here, you can change the temperature unit between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Go ahead and press back to go back and back again to go to the front screen. As you can see, the controller now reads the temperature and humidity correctly. This concludes this instructional video on how to set up the digital temperature and humidity sensor for the iGrow 1000 series controller. Please refer to your manual or our support website for additional instructional videos. You can always contact us at support at link4corp.com or call us at 866-755-5465.